Packard magazine and presented some tech tips too. So we came to the drag races where we could ask some questions. We started with the Budweiser King himself, Kenny Bernstein. the things that makes drag racing such a special sport is its open pit policy where the fans can come right into the racers dressing room so to speak and Kenny Bernstein you seem to spend about half your time talking with them well it is real unique in our sport like you said we're the only one that's allow that but it's good because the people can come right up and meet the drivers and watch the crew actually take the car apart and work on it and they can dream about boy I wish I was in there doing some of that and an awful lot of tips they can get to not only from fellows like you but on manufacturers midway with everybody represented there that relate directly to their street cars well absolutely they're all interested in cars that's why they're here so they can go to the manufacturer talk to those manufacturers they can tell them why their products are better or why they work and they can come and talk to us i know we're busy a lot of times but we do have time and we will stop and talk to them whenever the time permits and we'll tell them why we took that piston out what was wrong with it why we tear the car apart every run Joe Amato is the world champion top fuel driver and also the world's fastest drag racer at over 264 miles an hour. He is one of the most inventive guys you'll ever meet and he knows you can't overlook the basics in your engine because everything counts. You know, Joe, a lot of people are working on their own cars today, the do-it-yourselfers of the world, especially when it comes to changing oil. And there's really nothing pleasant about hot oil, but it should be hot. Yeah, Steve, uh, really a car should be hot, the motor should be run and shut off, and instantly the oil should be drained. This keeps all the particles that are in the oil uh, suspended in the oil, and then they drain out, rather than if the thing is just sitting there cold, all the things that are in the oil that you're trying to get out of there set on the bottom of the pan, because always a little bit of oil stays in the bottom of the pan. So it's important to get all the oil out and have it out hot. Now, even though you only ask a five seconds of work on your oil, you use two filters, Joe. Yeah, we use two filters and 12 quarts of Quaker Start oil because uh, every run we have to put it in fresh. We just warm the car up here, actually, we change the oil because the, the engine is so demanding. I mean, uh, that's the most important thing in our motor to keep the bearings in because when the bearings get too much heat, then it blacks the crank and it throws the rods out and blows the motor up. And, you'll, you know, you don't win a race if you have a blown up motor. Well, Joe, you change your oil every five seconds in your top fuel dragster, but what about your personal street machine? Uh, Steve, we change the oil on that about every thousand miles because we feel that it's important. Thousand miles? Yeah, I don't like to go to 3,000 like the factory recommends because I feel that you know, oil is really cheap and uh, motors cost a lot and it's important to change the oil frequently to keep everything running. Uh, I really baby my cars, but I think if you want a car to give you a good life and to live and give you the service you want, especially if you're a little bit hard on it because I don't drive it too easy, I, I change the transmission fluid too, which is important. A lot of people they let their transmission fluid go until they get 50,000 miles on their car. And then next thing you know, uh, they go, they have to go to a transmission shop and pay them five, $800. But really, if they look in their manual, probably 25,000 would be a good place to change the transmission fluid. And that's something, and the filter is also should be dropped down and uh, changed at the same time. What about a brand new car? How soon would you change the oil that came from the factory? Uh, I personally would change it between 500 and 1,000 miles. Really? Because when the factory puts the car together to start with, they're mass assembling the motors. And, Maybe they can't be as clean as they should be. And then also you have brand new surfaces that are started up and they're, they're, there's metal wear in there. So some of that metal is going to be floating around in the oil. So the quicker you can get it out of there, I'd get the car hot, drain the oil and change the filter and put new oil in. And I think, you know, you'll have a lot more longevity factor on the motor and the, and the parts that are in there. Thanks for the tip. You're welcome. Bob Glidden holds the honor of being the winningest driver in drag racing. He also commands one of the most sophisticated machine shops in racing for his Pro Stock Thunderbird. Bob, jetting of the carburetors on your Pro Stock car is absolutely critical. The average guy on the street, even the guy that takes very good care of his automobile, seldom thinks about those jets when he really should. That's right, Steve. Uh, it, it's really great for us to go and put headers on the car, which will help the performance. Uh, go from your normal production line carburetor to a uh, different Holly or whatever brand carburetor but when you do this you need to keep in mind that you may need to rejet the carburetor or rejet the carburetor for a header change or whatever you can't in many cases just make the change and and get a big performance gain you may have to uh, use a smaller jet or 
especially in, in some parts of the country, in higher altitude areas, you'll for sure want to use a smaller jet than you would uh, at sea level. How can I tell with my street car if I should rejet that carburetor? I'll tell you, it's really tough to make a change with a street car and go out and, and gently drive the car and say, well, this is better or this is worse. Uh, really, if you make a change, you need to uh, either make a long trip with uh, normal driving conditions and make uh, an analysis uh, on your jetting and, and whatever changes you made to the performance, or you might take your, your street car to the local racetrack, run it down the racetrack in the stock condition, then make your change and run it again and see what happens. What about a dynamometer, a chassis dyno? Good tune-up shops have them. Uh, is that an aid in jetting? I think that would, would do the same thing as running the car down the quarter-mile racetrack. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. We'll be back with more popular hot rodding magazine tech tips when Billy Meyer talks about tires and wheels. And Welcome back. You know how much fun monthly featured tech tips and going to some of the top professional racers in the country for advice you can use for your car. Kenny Bernstein, Joe Amato, and Bob Glidden. Now let's talk with Billy Meyer, owner and driver of the 7-Eleven Cheap Auto Parts Bunny Car and multi-time national event champion. Billy, so many people on the street want their car to look like a race car with custom wheels and racing style paint jobs, but there's one thing they shouldn't imitate. Well, they definitely should not try to imitate the rake of the, of the body like we do and have a big tire on the back and a, front and a small tire on the front, unless they do a lot of major modifications to the brake systems and quite a few things. Because as you know, Steve, the, the tire going a lot slower being a big tire, when you put a little tire on there, it's still got to go just as fast as the back tire, but it has to do it a lot more times in revolution to stay up with the, the back tire. So it changes the whole braking system on the car, and it, it actually makes a, a, a street car fairly dangerous. Oh. Uh, another thing is tire pressure. You know, everybody cringes at the price of new tires, but won't take the time uh, to check the air pressure. And on this car, that's critical. Oh, that's definitely true. On a street car, you can, you know, you'll see somebody 10, 15 pounds difference in a tire and never think about it. Or in our car, like on the rear end, for an example, a one pound of difference will load the back end of the car 50 pounds different per side, or one pound of difference can, can create us a lot of tire spinach and lose quite a few races. Well, and it has its effect on the street as well. You're just not aware of it. Well, definitely, and th this is a good testing ground for that because we have such a massive amount of horsepower that every, you know, each half a pound is a critical point to us. So it's the same way with a street tire. You can have a big tire and have to change the, the pressure. You know, I took a tip from you guys the other day and threw my pencil tire gauge away because for 5 or $6 now, you can get a gauge very much like the one you've got there. Well, there's no doubt about it. A gauge that you can read with, a, you know, with each increment of each poundage is, is a lot nicer to use. A pencil gauge, if you notice, you can push it in two or three times and get a different reading within five pounds every time. Not to mention the gauge on the air hose at the gas station. That's right. You may try to ride with it someday. So for just a couple of dollars, this is a good investment, huh? Oh, it's definitely a good investment. And just get one that'll go up to the 50 pounds so you can run your tire anywhere you want. Thanks, Bill. Okay, appreciate it. The Hawaiian Punch Bunny Car is the fastest bunny car in the world. And the winningest bunny car owner in drag racing is its owner and chief mechanic, Roland Leon. Roland Leon wouldn't own a car that didn't have a supercharger on it, including his own street Corvette you might have seen in Super Chevy magazine. And Roland, uh, supercharging becoming increasingly popular on the street. So what tips would you offer someone considering that route? Well, Steve, it's an easy way to make horsepower by boating on a supercharger on a, your regular stock engine. Uh, but a lot of people like myself tend to get carried away uh, as far as want to make more boost to make more power. Uh, one way to do that is by changing the pulleys, uh, which we do in our, just the same as our race car. Uh, but one thing that you have they have to watch out, people have to watch out, is that uh, uh, when you make more boost, there's a lot more strain on the engine. Uh, one big thing is that the engine want to detonate a lot more, uh, which is the problem I have run into. Uh, it's a, you can be cured uh, by a water injector, by backing off the distributor, playing with the timing, uh, but it also could be expensive. 
what is the boost limit you'd recommend for a stock engine? I recommend about five pounds. I've got mine around seven to nine pounds right now uh, and having a hell of a time trying to cure the detonation. So about five pounds, I feel be pretty safe. And install a boost gauge? Uh, definitely, definitely. That's the only way you could brace it. Uh, men like Don Garland, Roland the Hawaiian Leon, Gary Ormsby, and Warren Johnson have one very important thing in common. They all race with Hedman headers on their cars. Hedman is involved in all four and why so many racers use Hedman. The Miller American team is well known on the drag strip where Larry Miner and two-time world champion Gary...